Elwyn Forest is the quintessential example of great RPG music. The original World of Warcraft score was written by a team of composers, Jason Hayes, Tracy Bush, Derek Duke, and Glenn Stafford. The Warcraft soundtrack primarily comprises of orchestral instruments, with strings taking the lead role. The string work in all the World of Warcraft soundtrack is exquisite. Let's take an exclusive look on how to actually write string sections like this. We first have to take a big overview of what we want the strings to do in the song. What is their function? For example, in Elwyn Forest, the strings serve as the foreground element, providing the chord progression and the melody. However, just taking a look at what the entire string ensemble group can do is not enough. Usually we divide the strings into violins, violas, and cellos, or otherwise the highs, the mids, and the lows. The violins are what I like to call the lifters. They lift the sound and provide those nice tinkly highs to the overall sound. In Elwyn Force, they aren't exactly the main focus, the violas are. The violas carry the melody, especially in the second half of the song. And now the last string group, the cellos, are of course the foundational support, the needed bass that makes these strings lines powerful. Take a look to how this beginning section sounds with and without the cello. And without. With these three sections in mind, we focus on writing for one section at a time. I usually like to start with the violins first, as starting with the cellos may tend to overwrite for them and create a muddy sound. For strings in particular, the wide open chord voicings work best. One last key point about these strings is the use of automation. I cannot stress how important it is how automating the expressiveness of the strings turns what sounds like a MIDI instrument into a lifelike performance. So in FL Studio, which is the workstation I use, these red pills represent the modulation wheel automation. Now I usually record myself playing these, but after I record, I can edit these however I wish. The melodies in Elwyn Forest, while there's no set theme or recognizable melody in Elwyn Forest that is repeated, the melodies that are there are mostly found in the secondary instruments. There's a ton of instrument switching going back from the oboe, to the flute, to the bassoon, to clarinets, and so on. Just like the strings, expressiveness is so important to bringing out the life-like qualities of these instruments. If you are able to control the vibrato as well, that is also an important aspect to add. For more advanced techniques, let's take a look at this beginning oboe line. First, take a look at the automation. So just like with the strings, the higher the sill goes, the more volume or expressiveness is added. Also look down below here. These notes below are called key switches. Key switches change the articulation of the instrument, meaning that you can change whether the instrument goes from legato natural vibrato to no vibrato, even uh, separate articulations like the flutter, triple tone, or staccato. So all you need to do is press the key switches, which are usually found at the very bottom or the very top of the keyboard. Now I usually add these key switches after I record it, since it's much easier to focus on one thing at a time. So in this particular section, I switch from a vibrato, which is the C, to no vibrato, which is the C sharp. Of 
I find that these subtle differences in articulation really make a huge difference down the line. For melodies, don't be afraid to pair up instruments that sound nice together. So in the middle here, you have the bassoon and clarinet playing the exact same thing. So pairing instruments like these add additional colors that you wouldn't usually get in just one instrument. Percussion and L1 force is delicately used, but powerful when added. We only have three dedicated instruments for percussion. The hand percussion, the cymbal slide, and the deep hits. So beginning with the hand percussion, there is a ton of reverb added to this otherwise dry sounding instrument. The reverb, I think, helps enhance the RPG atmosphere here. I also made sure to boost the bass frequencies as well as extend these delays of these hits out a little bit further. And taking a broader view back here, notice the lack of constant percussion. Percussion in this song is only used in particular key moments, either to enhance the mood or to bring more impact on these deep hits. Out of all the instruments, the harp is very much constant throughout the tune. First of all, I use a combination of three different harps. The reason for this is to get the appropriate amount of tone needed. If you look at the mixer window, which I'll bring up here, you'll see that each of these harp sounds are mixed and routed to the single harp channel. Now this single channel controls all of these harps so I can automate the volume of all of these and add effects as well. I would say if you want to find that RPG harp sound is not to go overboard with picking and combining different harp sounds. Pick two or three of your favorites and bring out the best qualities of all of them at one time. Writing contrasting sections is one of the most fundamental tools in the composer's bag of tricks. Contrasting sections is not just about shifting from one chord progression to another chord progression, as you'll soon learn. Let's take a look at the difference between the middle sections of the song. First, let's just look at instrument switching. To make an effective contrasting switch, notice the particular tone of a section like this, the first one. The bassoon and the clarinet give an earthly and isolated vibe. And then in this next section, the strings give a much needed lift, epicness, and a conclusive resolution. Now let's look at the number of instruments. Section 1, we have only 4 instruments, the harp, oboe, bassoon, and clarinet. And then in the next section, we add far more greater quantity of instruments, since string ensembles by themselves comprise usually more of 6 players each ensemble. We can then conclude that switching between solo, more solo sections, and a more ensemble based section is a great technique. One last contrasting tip is dynamic level. Dynamics control the volume and the mood of the piece. So back in the introduction of this tune, we contrast the very soft violin line before exploding into these massive chords. This epic sort of contrast really grabs the attention of the listener when there's a big range of volume. The last topic I want to discuss is one of the issues many composers face is controlling their bass frequencies in the song. While there's no one hard rule to correct this, let me share with you some techniques to remove unnecessary bass frequencies. First and foremost, keep the bass simple. This applies especially for orchestral pieces. Having too many bass parts and complex rhythm patterns will usually end up muddying the mix. So in Elwyn Force, we have three instruments dedicated to the bass. Cellos, tuba, and deep hits. As I stated with the percussion section, usually deep hits sparingly, only on the most important moments and impacts in the song. Elwyn Force was a blast to recreate. Now I have a question for you. How has the world of Warcraft music or the game in general inspired you? If you'd like to be a Patreon of the channel, check out my Patreon page here. 
A big thanks to my current Patreons for help supporting and growing this channel. I shall leave you with Elwyn Forrest from World of Warcraft. Enjoy. <laughs>